Good day, it's Tony Fortunato from the Technology Firm. Today I'm going to introduce you to a neat little Wi-Fi utility that you might want to add to your Windows toolkits. So this is uh, called Wi-Fi Info View, and it's from Nursoft, and I'll uh, basically just jump right into it. So, the big what's. Uh, so when working with wireless devices, getting a real, uh, there you go, see? There, caught that one. Is a Getting a real number is critical. Thinking or suspecting that things have changed for the better or worse isn't a great methodology. And we see this all the time. People do a change, they sacrifice a chicken, they swing some herbs, and they say, how's that? And the client says, wow, that's much better. And it's not really changed much at all. And sooner or later they realize it doesn't change and you're back to square one. One of the basic values referenced in the RSSI or received signal strength indicator and that's a big number called the, as of course, called the RSSI. And this is a, a measurement of power level. So this is how loud the signal is. Uh, the other parts of wireless analysis start to cover the quality of the signal. How clean is it? So just think of your radio station on your radio. You can change the stations, obviously, and you have a volume button. This is the volume button, right? So this is what we're going to concentrate on today. So common issue, can you hear me now? And and that's a very, uh, you all know this saying, obviously, from commercials. And this is where you want to make sure the access point hears the laptop as well as the laptop hears the access point. And that may change depending on what rate you're transmitting at, all that kind of stuff. These little variables come into play. And then, of course, we have a whole bunch of noise to contend with as well. So sometimes you can't hear somebody clearly, but you can hear them loudly. And this is where you get in trouble because you might say, hey, my RSSI is great. I got a nice strong signal, but you don't have a unit of measurement to tell people how clear that is. So again, the radio analogy, you tune into the radio station, 99.9 uh, .9, and it's all staticky because you're out of range so what do you do you crank the volume well, that's not really going to fix much right so that's what we're talking about in this example is how loud the signal is so you, your access points you should go to your access points make sure uh, that you understand a does it have a wireless client table inside of it uh, and b what is it reporting so in this case it's an edimax access point and you can see it tells us the data rate this mcs715 thing if you're not sure what that means just google it and uh, you can figure it out quite quickly we don't have time to cover that right now uh, and obviously the channel width 20 40 that sort of thing other access points such as ubiquity will give you obviously the mac address as well we give you the signal strength so there's that rssi value and the noise floor right so these negative values throw people off right out of the right out of the gate and the best way to remember it is that negative value the closer the number is to 100 the weaker the signal the closer it is to zero the stronger the signal so we want a nice strong number a low number if you will numerically so 31 is better than 43 there that's the best way to explain that and then the noise we don't want to hear noise we want that as close to 100 as possible so that's that's the access point reporting how well he hears these clients so they have nice strong signals right the cutoff might be a negative I don't know 65 for example so these are all better than negative 65 and the noise is all in the high 90s and that's an awesome signal for all of those clients when it comes to the access points themselves you might actually find and I'm saying might because vendors aren't doing this anymore for some reason they used to actually uh, post what data rates you can expect based on the signal strength and there you go um, and they used to do the same thing for the client adapters as well I say used to because it's very rare right now and every environment is totally different so I think customers were holding the vendors uh, to this and complaining that's not what they got so you should always measure your own performance with your own signal strength okay on the client side, we obviously have to measure from the client as well. This is an example of a good old PCMCIA. That's how old these things are that I can't find these measurements anymore. And they tell you again, negative 84 is going to give you 11 meg. Uh, negative 85 is going to give you 9 meg, that sort of thing. And it's just a good measurement to have a good rule of thumb to have. And again, I'm encouraging you to do this in your own environment as well. And you should also document how your throughput is affected by your signal strength. 
So in Windows, you've got that five bar icon. I'm sure you've seen them before, and, and that doesn't really um, tell me a lot, right? It's, it's a fairly good indicator. Don't get me wrong. If you have one bar, obviously that's not as good as five. I, I get that, but it's not accurate. Uh, if you were to type a Windows command like netsh wlan show interfaces, down here it would say that you know your signal strength is 99% uh, of what, right? 99% of 100, but uh, what is that? Negative 70, negative 80, negative 40? I don't know what that is. Uh, so this is why I always tell people get a unit of measurement. These I call opinions. These are very, uh, I'm going to say, subjective. They're not very granular. Is a good way of saying that as well. And this is where the utility comes in, the Wi-Fi info view from NERSOFT. So it's a portable utility. So you just run it off a USB key, or you can even run it from the command line. So you can include it in a batch file. So I've done that before, where I have a little batch file, record the measurements as I walked around, and it just wrote it to a file. At the end of the little walk around, I can actually say, hey, look, I can see where the signal's great here, and it's not so great over there, that sort of thing. And there's my RSSI right and and don't forget remember uh, closer to 100 is weak so this negative 88 is a fairly weak signal compared to the negative 30 right so this one is is fairly i'm going to say far away from me the measurement point and there's your signal quality and in this case the high numbers is a good signal because it's not negative like the other screen we saw right so the higher the number the better the lower the number the not so good right and that's why you have to learn how these tools are measuring and it gives you this really cool average signal strength as well as you're walking around as well as the channel and the frequencies that you're coming across as well now if you double click on one of these guys it gets really interesting now i've kind of condensed this just because i want to show you the important stuff there's the ssid there's the mac address it tells me the rssi right there negative 55 the signal quality the average signal quality, which I think is really cool. The company, I know it's a ubiquity access point now, so if you are looking for rogue access points, it might say Linksys D-Link and you're a corporate environment and you don't want to find those things, and that's a good way to figure that out. And then lastly, it'll tell me down here the minimum and maximum signal quality. So as you're walking around, it'll give you that range as well. So I hope that helps. Uh, going to leave this URL in the write-up, so you can just click on it or just go to nursoft.net and you'll find it fairly easily as well. Have a good day. Bye for now.